Hello, so today what I would like to tackle are simple history taking skills. Um, something, this is something that really helped me during my nationals and also during my end of year exams at university. I found it to be really helpful. It helped me to tick off everything and I could visualize it in my head and go through it systematically. And that's really important to make sure you haven't missed anything out as being in those sorts of situations can be really daunting and really stressful. Um, and also one thing that I wasn't aware of is that in your national exams um, for, physic for physician associates is that they actually give you a piece of paper and a pencil um, at the start of every station. And I wasn't aware of this. So you could actually use that to write down your structure so when you're in the station, you can always relate back to it and see what you have and haven't done. Um, so today we'll be tackling a simple history such as foot pain. And I'm going to talk you through how I would battle this in an OSCE station. So first, I would obviously introduce myself, my name and role, full name and role. So hello, my name is Neely Rezazian and I am a physician associate. Can I confirm your name and age, please? Then you move on to saying, I will be asking you some questions about why you've come in today. And I will also be asking you some few further questions about yourself and family background. Are you happy to continue? So what you've done there, you've introduced your full name and role. You've confirmed the patient's details that you've got the correct patient in front of you. And you've also um, got their consent to carry on with the consultation. Um, then you will move on with two open questions so how can i help you today or what's brought you in today so they will either be really stingy with their answer and say what would you like to know or they may go on a rant and just not stop talking or they can just give you a snippet so if my patients come in with foot pain they could just say mm, my toe hurts in any case, no matter what direction the patient goes in, you must ask a second open question. Can you tell me a little bit more about that is a really good one. Um, if you do get a patient who doesn't stop rambling on, you it is a communicational skill to be able to sort of take control and take the lead and direction of the consultation. If they're giving you really useful information, that is absolutely fine. You're making my job easier. But if they're going and diverting and going off the topic, you need to be able to uh, rein them back in, put them on the right direction. So then once you've introduced yourself, you've asked your two open questions, you've gathered and you've gauged a bit of information. So for example, my patient will say, my toe hurts. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's been going on for the last few days. Then what you would then do is Right, so foot pain. You in your head immediately, as soon as someone says foot pain, I'm sure you're thinking of all the different dif differential diagnoses. So you have things like gout, you have things like injury, you have um, loads of different, obviously loads of different types of injuries. Um, you have fractures, strains, muscle pains, bruising, um, things like that. There's things such as diabetes. You could think of diabetic foot. You could think of an ulcer. You could think of um, a verruca. So many different things. So what you would now do is to try and narrow down into your differentials is you ask very direct questions. So with any pain, whether it's your chest pain, your migraine pain, head pain, any pain, you go through Socrates. So sight, can you tell me specifically where the pain is coming from? Onset, when did this start? Does it come and go, etc., etc. So work your way through Socrates. Once you've finished Socrates, hopefully you'll have a little bit more information. So for example, if someone says it started sudden onset, um, out of nowhere, it's raging, it's burning pain, you're thinking more towards something like gout. If it's something along the lines of, yeah, it was sudden onset, um, it's not raging pain, but it's really sh severe, sharp pain. I can't move my foot. Um, it's not really radiating anywhere. You're thinking maybe it's more of an injury, things like that. 
if it's a chronic pain it's been going on for a long time um you're thinking something more chronic such as diabetes such as a veruca potentially um other underlying things uh, that could be going on so once you start narrowing down your differentials what you're doing in this section is all the differentials you can think of obviously we're all human we're not all going to be able to remember every single differential in an oski situation because it's really difficult um but as much as you can think of just try and tick them off so if you're thinking of gout what you would ask is things like their diet do you drink a lot of wine? Do you drink a lot of alcohol? Do you eat a lot of red meat? Do you consume, what, talk me through your diet. Do you have a lot of fish, seafood, clams, like things like that. Um, if you're thinking more towards injury, has anything happened in the preceding couple of weeks uh, whereby you fell over? Have you knocked your foot on anything? Um, if you're thinking diabetes, is your diabetes well controlled? When was the last time you had a diabetic foot check? um things like that you could be thinking of all sorts of different things these are just what i've thought of off the top of my head um so once you've narrowed down your differentials and you can kind of gauge and you're happy with the direction you're going in um that's really good and if you're stuck and you are finding it really difficult to figure out what the diagnosis is what i find really useful at this point is to do a review of systems so there are a lot of histories that you will not be able to figure out just by taking a history and um having your blinkers on because sometimes having a review of systems um really 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 opens up your differential diagnosis list so for example, asking things from head to toe, do you have a headache or have you had a headache? Any changes to your vision? Any changes to your skin? Any new skin changes? Have you noticed anything at all? Um, any recent infections, viral, bacterial, any recent antibiotics you've taken? Any chest pain, any shortness of breath? Um, any aches and pains anywhere else in your body? Um, are you using the bathroom? Have you opened your bowels? When was the last time you opened your bowels? In terms of bowels, it's really important to ask when the last time they opened their bowels was and do they use the bath and do they open their bowels every day? And what is the form of their feces or their stools? Is it have there been any changes? And um, they might say no, there haven't been any changes, but they might have had constipation or diarrhea for months. So you need to ask them what's normal for them and they will be able to tell you. Obviously you gauge with each situation is different, you tailor it. So someone's coming in with stomach pains and you're doing review of systems, asking them about their bowels. If their bowels are quite runny and they are experiencing diarrhea, you would then think, are you having any melina? Are you having any, or you wouldn't ask that, obviously that's jargon, but you would ask them, okay, have you noticed any blood in your stools? Have your stools um, become more dark in colour? Are they black? Are they tarry? Things like that. So review of systems, we've done bowels, urine. How often um, are you passing urine okay? Are there any um, changes to your urine? Any colour changes? Is there a strong smell? Um, is it burning? Have you noticed any blood? Um, things like that. Then once you've done review of systems and you're happy with it and you've gauged a bit more information about what's going on with the patient, you then move on to asking them the list of questions, which of course is, do you have any medical conditions? They will tell you, okay, do you take any regular medications? They will tell you, let you know. Are you taking your medications correctly or as prescribed? You choose the way of wording you, you guys prefer. Um, you would also then go on to ask them, do you have any allergies? So once you're doing past medical history, it's really easy to do past medical history, drug history, allergies. Make sure you ask them if they're compliant with their medication, um, if their conditions are well controlled, so they could have diabetes, but they haven't actually, they don't check their um, blood glucose and they, they're not on medication. Um, so it's really important to ask. Um, then you, I would personally move on to family history. So does anyone in your family, specifically parents, grandparents and siblings, do they suffer from any medical conditions? Because if they start telling you about their cousins or whatnot, 
that's irrelevant. You need to know siblings, parents and grandparents. Even grandparents um, may not be as informative for you. However, um, I personally do ask. Uh, as long as I'm not being told about their sister-in-law or their cousin or their auntie's son, which is obviously cousin. But um, you're more interested in the direct family tree. Then I would move on to asking about social history. So now I'm going to ask you a few questions about your life. What do you do for a living? And what I usually do is how are you finding that? So if they're a student, okay, how are you finding university? If they're uh, an engineer, how are you finding your job? Because then you kind of gauge their mental status as well. Um, if they're stressed, you kind of pick, pick up on that. Um, again, that's something personal to what I would I would do in that situation. So you've asked them about their occupation. Who do they live with? Um, how's, how's home life? Is your wife pregnant? Are you stressed because of the financial situation that your wife is pregnant? Um, obviously, these are these are tailored to different um, scenarios. Obviously, if someone comes in with foot pain, I probably wouldn't gauge too much and indulge too much into things like this. Just a simple how are you feeling is absolutely fine. Um, asking them about smoking. Do you smoke? They might very well say no. But they could have quit smoking a few hours ago or yesterday or a few years ago. Regardless, these are really important for loads of conditions. Um, a smoking history can complicate a lot of conditions and can give you a higher risk of uh, mortality, I guess. So asking them, OK, have you ever smoked after they say no is a really important question. Some people might say, no, I've never smoked. Um, and the actors are trained to give you certain responses. So if in this situation the actor has never smoked, they might say, no, I've never smoked. Or one of the um, marks of an OSCE station could be for you to gauge, have you ever smoked? No. Okay. Tick. You've got two ticks now because you asked them, do you smoke and have you ever smoked? Then you move on to alcohol. Um, do you drink any alcohol? Yes, no. Have you ever drank any alcohol? Yes, no. What do you drink? How often do you drink? Um, and gauge again with that um, signpost if the person you're worried about is drinking a litre of vodka a week or they're drinking above the limit. Um, signposts say um, we have loads of different um, things available, resources available, should you wish to come and speak to anyone about that. Um, but just make sure that smoking cessation and alcohol advice is not the main area of your history, unless they're coming in with anemia, um, depression, things like that. So signpost and move on. Then what I would do is ask them about surgical history. Have you had any surgeries, any previous surgeries? Um, if it's a gynae history, any previous pregnancies, miscarriages, terminations, are you breastfeeding? Because that might change your um, treatment and management for the patient as well. Um, and then after I've done all of that in my head or on my sheet of paper, if I've written all this down, um, just take a glance. If you've not missed anything out, then that's absolutely fine. Move on and summarise. So um, a lot of history questions, history scenarios, um, they might they might just be histories, but a lot of the time they do have a minute question. Um, so if you have time, summarise all your findings. So, for example, we have a 15 year old male who presented to the GP with a three day history of pain in his toe radiating to his ankle. He's unable to weight bear um, and then summarize as you would normally summarize with your top key information and then with the least essential information um, you give your intake and um, opinion on the situation and then hopefully you either have a minute question or you don't and you've summarized um, if you have a minute question, 
then that's great. You obviously answer it. The minute questions will usually be, what's your top differential diagnoses? You just state what they are. And um, another minute question could be, what's your management for this patient? Um, and or they might ask you, what is your what is your top differential? So they might ask you for a list of differentials, one differential um, and your management. And another thing that you should do um, in your histories and a lot of other things is ice your patients. So ask them if they have any concerns, um, any expectations, what were they coming in to um, expect? basically from this consultation and just ensure that you do um, acknowledge any concerns and expectations that they did have um, and thank the patient for coming in and sharing the information with you and close the consultation. So I hope this was helpful. Um, this is something that I put together when it came to my end of year exams for university and it really did help because mentally I was able to knock off um, a checklist in my head because I realised in my first year of university for history taking OSCEs, it was just really difficult. There was so much going on, so much information was just running through my head, but verbally I couldn't get it out. Um, I noticed that happening in my formative exams. Um, and I just found that this structure made sure that I ticked everything off my list. And even if you don't ask all the relevant questions in your um, history of presenting complaint, at least you followed a structure and you've not missed anything essential. So I hope this was really helpful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, that sounds really, really horrendous. I never thought I would ever hear myself saying that. But um, the more subscribers I get, the more feedback I get, um, the more it motivates me to upload videos like this um, and I hope that I can help even if it's just one percent. So thank you for listening and I hope everyone has a good day.